you think the worst because you think nobody can take care of it. Unless someone's experienced that 24-7, it's just really hard. This could be anybody. Anybody's life can change on a dime. Everybody deserves a high quality of life. This is the complete package. It's the real deal. My name is Reno Berg. I'm President and CEO of Mainstream Living. Thanks for taking a little time to learn about our latest project serving people with severe and profound intellectual disabilities who have high medical needs. If this home is not developed, the options for the people that we serve and their families are somewhat limited. The first option would be that individuals could go to either one of the state institutions, either Woodward State Hospital or Glenwood State Hospital. Those are large institutions that are located in rural Iowa. The other place they could go once they exit the children's system at age 22 is they could go into a nursing home at age 22, which certainly does not seem appropriate place for them to be. Thirdly, they could go into a facility called an Intermediate Care Facility for Mentally Retarded. The acronym is ICFMR. There are 1,769 beds in the state of Iowa. They're all full and no more can be developed. So they can get into that system on a vacancy available basis. Uh, there may be a vacancy caused by a consumer passing away in Dubuque or Charles City or Davenport or Council Bluffs, but there's not one here. The other place they can go is they can return home to their families. And if that happens, the care for these individuals is so intense that the divorce rate for families taking care of people with severe and profound disabilities is approximately 95%. By the time they take care of the individual and provide what they need on a daily basis, they have nothing left to give to each other, frankly, and the marriage tends to fall apart. When um, you care for a child like that, that's a lot of uh, extra stress. And unless someone's experienced that 24-7, it's just really hard. When you're awake, one of us was caring for him, and obviously most of that was Carol. So um, that puts a lot of stress and a lot of mental fatigue, I think, associated with that. When we decided to move him into the house here, we knew it would have to be a place that he would get the care that he needed. And it was very, very hard for us to make that decision. We have always thought of Laura as being a great individual that needs a great placement. So the big things were that she could fit in someplace that would allow her to be part of community, that she would get all of her physical needs met, her medical needs met, and be loved on, and yeah, live a great life. The only option they really gave us was a nursing home, and that wasn't appropriate for a 22-year-old who likes to go out and do things and be with peers. and be with family, so that wasn't um, a good option. One fortunate day, Andy got to move to Mainstream, and I'll never forget the day <laughs> Reno called in November to say, he's in. Um, kind of one of the happiest days of my life. It was a good deal. It was a really good deal. Oh, sorry. <laughs> the really nice thing is that Malin lives in Mainstream now, and this is her home for adulthood. You know, she doesn't need to move. We don't need to worry about where she's going to go next. And um, that is a really nice relief for parents. It has everything that any parent could dream of for their child with disabilities and high medical need. He's so happy. And, you know, everywhere he's been, he's been loved. I know he has and he's been well cared for, but this is the complete package. It's the real deal. and. You're happy a lot, yes. You might ask the question of what sets this apart from a traditional group home for people with disabilities. Number one, it's a facility that is specifically designed to take care of people who are non-ambulatory in wheelchairs and cannot fend for themselves. There's a track system in the ceiling with hydraulic lifts and canvas chairs designed so that we can safely pick people up and transport them anywhere in the facility without hurting them. The other thing is we have bedrooms that are large because these people have to live in them. Each bedroom has a full bath with a roll-in shower and a toilet and a sink. Also, the rooms are big enough that each room has a queen-size sofa sleeper. That is for people to stay overnight if they would like to stay overnight and visit their, their son or daughter or brother or sister on an overnight basis. 
We frequently have people come in for Friday night movies and popcorn, and sometimes if our individuals are not feeling well, uh, parents will stay overnight. The other thing that makes our facilities entirely different from other facilities is we have a nurse on duty 24-7. I mentioned before the uh, category of intermediate care facility for mentally retarded. Technically, that's a level higher than uh, what we're offering at Mainstream, but ICFMRs have nurses on call. We have nurses on duty 24-7, and that seems to be a big relief to the individuals that we're serving and their families to know that their medical needs are being appropriately cared for. To understand what this house means to us, you would have to understand Luke's medical needs. Luke requires 24-hour, seven-day-a-week care. I can't explain the thoughts that go through your mind. And you think the worst because you think nobody can take care of it. The biggest feature, which is an enormous selling point for any parent with a child of special needs, is that there is a nurse on site 24-7 and that is rare. I believe that Mainstream is the only organization that does that. One of the major things that we appreciate about the Baker House is that there is a nurse here 24-7, and it, it kind of takes the pressure off of us. That is an enormous gift to all of us parents, and we're thrilled to have that opportunity to be part of this. When I talk to groups about the need for this home in the community to serve persons with severe and profound intellectual disabilities with high medical needs. A question I often ask the group is, how many of you have either children or grandchildren? And as you might imagine, almost everybody raises their hand. And then I ask the question, when you or your spouse were expecting, how many of you prayed that your child would be non-ambulatory, non-verbal, severely and profoundly intellectually disabled, have diabetes, epilepsy, and cerebral palsy? How many of you prayed for a child that couldn't dress themselves, couldn't feed themselves, couldn't recreate themselves, couldn't transport themselves, and in fact couldn't even position themselves in a chair? And I asked for a show of hands. And of course nobody raises their hand. Nobody would pray for a child like that. But the fact of the matter is that some of our friends and neighbors have had children like that. And it seems to me that it behooves the rest of us, when that happens to our friends and neighbors, to do what we can and do as much as we can to establish residential facilities in the community so that these people can remain close to family and friends. This could be anybody. You know, Andy could have been born to any parent. Anybody's life can change on a dime. There can be a car accident. There can be a child born who has needs. You, you don't know. And until you experience that, you have no idea what the situation is and what's needed. It's kind of, but for the grace of God, I could have never predicted and I would never have known what that need was until it happened to me. But since it's happened to me, I know lots of other people because we have our community and, and you get to know each other. It's a community you don't want to have to be part of. I feel privileged to be part of it because Andy's introduced me to a lot of fantastic people. We've got friends all over the place that we never would have met if it weren't for Andy. Years ago, our kids weren't seen out in public and it didn't have the opportunities that Andy has. And, he deserves that and, and everybody, everybody deserves that. Everybody deserves a high quality of life. It's because of places like Mainstream that Andy has a quality of life he does and I truly believe the longevity of life he does. The stimulation and the love contribute greatly not only to his mental well-being but to his physical well-being. The establishment of this home will allow families and persons with disabilities to remain in the same community close to family and friends. It will enable families to return to a normal lifestyle and at the same time be assured that their individuals are receiving proper care. You can help to make this project happen through your generosity and financial assistance. There's always going to be persons with disabilities. And if we can find a way to provide for them when they can't provide for themselves, this is a win-win. Yeah. And as there are so many kids that need homes and our goal is to get you know nap house built and many 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 more like them just like i have said many times laura lived at child serve for 13 years somebody paved the way way before those 13 years where she lived 
So we all need to pay it forward and make it possible for these kids to live great, healthy, long lives.